of this week's tech tips on Torque Television. My name is Mark, I'm with Texas Performance Motorcycles. And on this week's tech tip, we're gonna kind of go over some basics about belt deflection and chain tension, and about how your suspension can play a role in that. Um, we're gonna go over some basics about how the suspension moves and travels. And we're gonna be using this 2009 Dyna that belongs to a friend of ours to kind of go over um, what that looks like and how we adjust them here and how the length of your shocks can play a role in what this tension needs to be. So uh, this bike has a 13 inch rear shock that puts this axle slightly lower than this pivot shaft. So this is kind of gonna be what we're referencing in most of the video today, is this angle and this relation of your rear axle to your pivot shaft and how that affects everything. So the basic suspension of a circle is you've got two, two things that you're trying to balance out here. You've got your front pulley or sprocket, uh, that goes on your main shaft of your transmission here, and you've got your rear pulley here. And those two circles are what you're trying to get this belt tension on. The thing that kind of affects or makes things different to the reason you can't just set it banjo tight and it's good all the time is that your suspension pivots off of a different center circle. So your rear suspension pivots off of your pivot shaft, which is in a different location than the center of that front pulley up here. So as your suspension compresses and rebounds, it's gonna change the distance between these two circles because they're not um, changing location based on each other. There's a, a separate thing. So when this, is, when this uh, swing arm is perfectly in line as far as the front, the front pulley, the pivot shaft, and the axle, when they're perfectly in line, that's the tightest that this setup will ever get. Um, that's where you're gonna want your tightest setting. And then based on that, you're gonna to have to kind of use a little bit of judgment and see where, where it needs to be. So anything where your uh, axle is higher than your pivot shaft uh, is gonna be looser than that tightest point. And obviously anything lower is gonna be looser. So what we like to do when we're setting belt tension and chain tension, especially with bikes that have extremely modified suspension, higher or lower, either direction, is uh, we actually like to remove the suspension when we're setting the belt tension and uh, put it at uh, the exact tightest spot. And then kind of from there, we'll reinstall the suspension. And if there needs to be a slight modification because the suspension setup is so extreme, we'll make that adjustment at that point. But that's typically the best way. And we'll go ahead and show you what that looks like here in just a second. All right guys, so we took the shocks off. Uh, we don't need to remove them all the way. We're not trying to swap the suspension out. We're just trying to show you how to set this belt tension right. So we removed the bottom bolt. Uh, we've set them kind of out the way so that we can modulate the height of the bike real quick with the jack. Um, what you're gonna wanna do is try and set this swing arm as flat as you can. Um, there's a couple ways to do it. You can use a digital protractor or a protractor, something like that. Another quick, simple way is to just kind of feel the belt tension as you're lifting and lowering the bike. Whenever it's at its tightest point, that's when everything is in line. Again, because remember, we're trying to align up this rear axle, the pivot shaft, and the front pulley or sprocket, uh, depending on what you're running for a final drive. So when you find that tightest point, so it's starting to get looser again here, we're gonna lower it back down and keep getting tighter. It's gonna keep getting tighter and then it starts getting looser. So we're gonna come back just a little bit. And right here is about our tightest point. And that's where we're gonna start setting our belt deflection. All right, so this is another tool you're gonna need to go ahead and check that belt tension. This is just a, I believe this is a Motion Pro. There's a couple of people, I think Harley makes one. There's a couple aftermarket companies, but it's just a 10 pound belt tension tester. Now, um, if you're doing this on a chain, it's gonna be a little different. But what we like to do is at its tightest point, we like to set this up with about a quarter inch of deflection. So that means we're gonna push this up until we hit the 10 pound mark and then watch how far it drops. Now you've got a couple of different ways you can do that. Um, if you have the stock lower belt guard on here, you can use these uh, little indicators on there to kind of measure it. If you don't, another great thing to have is a little machinist ruler to go ahead and test it. So we're gonna throw the tensioner on there. And this is just how I like to do it. There's lots of different ways but I set the machinist rule up behind it and I'm gonna push it up to 10 pounds. And then I'm gonna watch how far it drops when I lower it down. So we've got one eighth, a quarter, three eighths, almost a half inch. And um, I believe I said it, we, need, we want a quarter inch. You, you want somewhere between like a quarter and uh, five sixteenths, somewhere around there. So this is uh, extremely loose right now. Um, so we're going to go ahead and, uh, tighten this belt up and then we'll show you kind of what that looks like, um, as far as adjusting this bike and then, uh, what it looks like once we've adjusted it with that belt tension, the way that we like to set it here. 
adjust this belt tension, um, the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and loosen your axle nut. And this bike happens to be a 36 millimeter. Uh, it just kind of depends on what model you want, uh, what model you're working on, rather. It's not model, what model you want, and what this axle is. Um, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to kind of make an assumption because we've worked on this bike. We're going to assume that the axle is straight because we've done a lot of the work to this motorcycle. But uh, if it's a new bike or it's a bike that is uh, the first time coming to you, the first time you're working on it or whatever, this is a great time to go ahead and check your alignment. Uh, there's a few different ways depending on what model. Uh, some models have a actual precision drilled hole in the frame that you can use uh, to, to check the center of the axle from side to side. Some models you have to go all the way to the pivot shaft. That just kind of depends. Uh, we're we can, we're going to do another episode later on about rear wheel alignment, vehicle alignment. But for the purposes of this video, we're going to assume that this bike's already straight. The most important thing when you're adjusting the belt tension is to adjust both sides evenly. So right now, what I'm going to do is turn this one flat. And then I'm going to come to the other side and turn it the exact same amount. Then for the purposes of checking the tension, I'm going to go ahead and snug this up. I'm not torquing it. This is not how it's leaving. I'm going to go ahead and remove all the ten or, you know, put tension back in this axle, compress those bearings, and give it a good squeeze because that does affect this tension. Then I'm going to come back and check it like we talked about. I'm going to take my machinist rule. I'm going to put it kind of behind my gauge and then I'm going to measure at the tension. And this tension needs to be measured mostly in the middle of the belt. You don't want it to be super close because the middle of the belt is where you're going to get the most, or the least tension, I should say. So we've got 10 pounds on here right now. We're going to watch it come out. We've got 1 16th, 2 16th, 3 16th, 4 16th. So right there, we're at a quarter, a quarter inch deflection, which is right where you want to be at the absolute tightest point of your suspension travel. Again, if you're not removing the shocks, this is not the spec. And if you have stock shocks, you can just look up the stock deflection in the service manual. But this is how we do it on here. So now what we're going to go ahead and do is I'm going to loosen this nut again. Now that the axle is loose, we're going to go ahead and torque this axle. I can still see that there's a little bit of anti-seize behind the nut, so I'm not going to pull it and reapply fresh anti-seize. But uh, we're going to go ahead and torque this axle. This axle gets torqued to 100 foot-pounds. And I always like to loosen it all the way before I go to torque it again, just to double check. And we're also going to double check that our adjusters are sitting firmly against the swing arm. Um, because when you go to torque it and you're torquing it, sometimes what can happen is the swing arm can have some damage. Uh, they could not be adjusted straight as far as like in the bike, like we're going to go over in our uh, vehicle alignment video. But you want to make sure that these are, are tight and all the way against the, the, their stop. Uh, that's going to look different for different models, but that way you know that where you set it and the tension you set it to is where it's going to stay and it's not going to have the ability to change or shift going down the road. All right, guys. So now that we uh, have set up our belt tension at the, uh, the tightest point when the swing arm is flat, the last thing left to do is to go ahead and raise this bike back up and then reinstall the rear shocks. Um, once you do that, we'll show you one quick check just to make sure this bike doesn't have an extreme suspension, so it's not super critical, but if you have like really, really tall shocks and your bike through the suspension travel can never reach that tightest point, those are extreme cases. But for most people, 13, 14, 15 inch shocks, this is the best way that we've found to do it. We'll go ahead and finish putting this shock back on, torque those shock mounts up, and then lower the bike. And at that point, the belt deflection just kind of is what it is. Um, we don't recommend going tighter on a belt deflection because if it's too tight at that tightest point, if you ever hit that going through a bump, going through whatever, you can cause damage to the belt. Um, that's one of the main reasons why chains are super popular with bikes with taller rear shocks is because a chain is a lot more forgiving if you do have a taller suspension. It's a lot more forgiving if you have a loose setting because it has to be loose because during the suspension travel, it's going to do nothing but get tighter. Um, that's why you see a lot of these bikes out here with chains on them. Um, yeah, they look cool. They look pretty, but the biggest thing is, is if you have a really tall suspension, like if this bike had a 15 or a 16 inch shock, this belt, once it got there, would just be super loose. And belts do not like to work when they're loose. They like to be tight. Um, so once you hit a certain point, a chain is a great upgrade. But for this bike, um, a belt's totally fine. We'll go ahead and slap these rear shocks back on here, get them torqued on, and show you what that belt tension looks like.
the one last thing we're going to do, we've got the shocks torqued, we've got the axle torqued. The one thing we like to do is just feel this belt, make sure it's not like super banjo tight and it's not super loose. And then what we're also going to do is apply a little bit of pressure to the back of the bike, cycle through the suspension. Um, you may have to loosen your uh, preload adjusters or have a buddy help you uh, stand on the passenger seat or something like that just to get weight as far back as you can. But cycle it through the suspension, make sure we're not hitting a super tight or a super loose point anywhere in there. And uh, that's how we adjust belts here. Uh, again, this is not the only way. There are lots of other ways that you can do this. This is just how we do it. And we kind of want to show you some of these basics about how that axle uh, relation in relation to your pivot shaft and your front pulley can affect it. And again, when it's below the pivot point, you're, this is going to be looser. If your axle is above the pivot point, you just set it to a quarter inch when the axle, when the wheel is full at full sag under your suspension, because your suspension can never reach that tight point. Wherever it is, if this axle is above this pivot point, that is your tightest point in your suspension travel because through the arc of that rear wheel, it's only going to continue to get looser. So the, the pulling of the shocks, setting it at the, the flat swing arm level at the tightest point, and then kind of leaving it as is, is mostly for if you have taller shocks on there. Um, and if you got stock shocks, just follow the, uh, the belt deflection in the service manual. Um, Harley spends a lot of time doing research and development to set it to that. We do recommend checking this belt tension about every 5,000 miles though. We like to do it uh, at every service, which is we do a full service every 5,000 miles here. And uh, obviously anytime you change a tire, we're changing brake rotors. Anytime you have this axle loose, we like to check this belt tension or chain deflection, chain tension, and, uh, and go ahead and adjust it at that point. All right, guys, thanks for watching this week's tech tip. Don't forget to go follow us on Instagram at Texas Performance MC. Uh, our website is TexasPerformanceMC.com. And go ahead and follow Torque Mag USA while you're there. And we will see you next week at 9 on Torque Television.